So here we are again. Uh, this is my latest attempt to make uh, an efficient wood cooker, and this is a, a rocket stove, uh, which is basically a standard design. Uh, and the only thing of note with mine is I have two number 10 cans uh, stacked one on top of another. Uh, obviously on the inside there they're open-ended uh, and it's actually three soup cans uh, one inside the other uh, actually they're spaghetti cans I take that back spaghetti cans one inside the other uh, and then on the bottom here I have a, a corn can and what I'm using here is uh, for fuel is a, a chopped up 2x4. I have it chopped up in fairly small pieces. So we're going to give this one a try and see what happens. Uh, and I just lit it. It's not really lit very well yet, so I'm not going to I'm not going to put the the pot on until it's lit well. Okay, so it's lit pretty well now, uh, but you can see those flames really are shooting up pretty high. Uh, it's kind of bright out here, even though I'm under this roof, but um, this porch roof. But those flames are about six inches taller than that pot standoff that I got stuck on there. So, oh, and I forgot to mention also, I've got this thing filled with vermiculite, and I'm actually kind of surprised. But the outside of this thing gets hot, uh, too hot to touch when it's burning. Anyway, I'm going <coughs> to stick this, uh, this pot on here and we'll see how long it takes it to, to boil. Okay, uh, I just put that pot on and uh, you can see those flames are uh, licking the outside of that pot. Now, most of the places say that you should have a, a skirt or a wind guard around the outside of the pot in order to maximize the heat. And I may wind up doing something like that one of these days, but uh, for now, I'm just going to try it like this, so I can have a fair comparison to the uh, <coughs> gasifier stoves that I made before. But you can see a bunch of them are sitting back here. Uh, now, one thing I didn't like about this design when I was looking at them before is that the pots get sooty. Uh, so far, I don't see much soot on this thing, though. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens after it's been on there a while. And inside you can see a pretty good flame in there. Okay, so now uh, you can see this water is boiling. It's a ro rolling boil. And so you can see that it works. However, what I don't like about this design is all this soot. Uh, there's a lot of soot on the outside here. Uh, it burns pretty clean until, until I start pushing more wood inside there. And then it... Um, and it really starts smoking and it makes quite a lot of soot. Once that wood's burning, it it's pretty soot free, but uh, but once it's once you need to put more wood in it, it, it really gets quite a lot of soot. Here's the amount of wood that I use to get that uh, that one quart of water to boil in fifteen minutes. I put that dollar on there for scale. Uh, it's roughly that amount of wood. And that's pretty efficient. Uh, once again, though, I don't like that soot. What we're looking at here is my pitiful attempt at a heat exchange unit which I did try this once before, but 
I've made a, a change to it. Namely, I put that inside can on there. And uh, what we have here, that's a silver plate. No, I'm kidding. That's a, a stainless steel plate that I, I bought at uh, a thrift store for two bucks. Uh, looks fancy, but it, it isn't. And it was, it was actually not in very good shape. And inside here, I got a bunch of big nails. Um, a bunch of very big nails. And I drilled holes and put them all in. There's actually 21 nails. And then on the top, I used the, the lid for a number 10 can. Uh, to screw down and hold hold those nails in place because originally I thought that I wouldn't have to do that but I did if I had used uh, screws instead of nails I probably wouldn't need that plate but I didn't feel like we doing it so this is the way it is so this is a heat exchange unit and the whole concept behind this is that I think it's gonna uh, cut down on the soot but I know that it's gonna use more wood and I've got roughly triple the amount of wood here in order to see if I can get this thing to boil using that wood so that's it and we're gonna give it a try okay now we got it uh, we've got it all set up again I I washed all the soot off that pot, put another quart of water in there, and we're going to see if this concept works worth pursuing any further. Uh, now I, I've never made a heat exchanger before, so I have no real idea how well it'll work, or if it'll work well or not, you know, if... You know, I'm, I'm sure it'll work eventually, but, uh, you know, nails are not the best conductor of heat. I suppose they're pretty good, and it all fits in there pretty nice. So, we'll see. Now, in case you're wondering if that's hot, let me just... pretty hot. It's not very hot. It's pretty hot. We'll have to just see what happens. I only just put it on anyway. Uh, here's what happens when you put in new wood. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of black smoke. Uh, once it's burning there's very little. But when you put in new wood it burns black until it really gets going. So I just wanted to uh, add that. So you can see that that's gone now. That's because that wood is burning very nicely now. So I'm about to wrap up this experiment. Uh, it really didn't work as well as I thought it would. And I was unable to boil water in uh, three times the time uh, with uh, four times the wood so we've uh, we spent more than 35 minutes trying to get this water to boil and it's pretty hot but it's not boiling but the good news is there's no soot on the pot. So I think this plan, at least with this kind of heat exchanger that I designed myself, paid it full as it is, is not really a very good idea. Uh, okay, one last thing before I go. Um, you can see all the soot on there. And 
So, it did a good job of keeping the soot off. Uh, it's basically, there's almost none on that that pan, but, uh, you know, I, I think great-grandmother's uh, Franklin stove <coughs> was probably a better user of energy if you plan on using a heat exchanger that cast iron on top of those old-fashioned stoves which actually they used to be somewhere still around when I was a kid <coughs> but um, I think they were uh, a better way to do things than this uh, now they used to throw full full size logs in theirs back in those days and just leave it uh, it'd sit in there for an hour or so I guess they didn't have to keep feeding it really and they'd cook on top of those stoves so that's just one observation but uh, for sure I think that uh, this particular attempt at a heat exchanger for one of these rocket stoves is definitely a dead end so if I do something else it'll it'll need to <clears throat> it'll need to be a whole lot better than this but I don't want to spend a lot of money on it either so I'm probably not going to do much with it